30 Years of Watchtower Slave, Chapter 6, entitled The Judge Visits Germany. The first subheading is entitled Early Days at Magdeburg. Now, the Bethel there in Germany was situated in Magdeburg, and he mentions that there was no staircase in the building, so he had to climb to his sleeping quarters where he slept by use of a ladder. And some of the brothers jokingly said that by means of this they were ascending and descending Watchtower Hill, which was in contrast to Jacob's ladder, ascending and descending to heaven. So in the early 1925 they began publishing copies of the book Harp of God in German. This work involved around the clock printing and publishing seven days a week. The next section is entitled, Instead of Princes, the Judge. So by the spring of 1925, the world was supposed to be ending and princes of the Bible, such as David, Moses, Aaron, so on and so forth, were supposed to be resurrected and begin ruling over the earth. That was supposed to take place in 1925. But with the arrival of, instead of princes, it was Judge Rutherford. And he mentions this funny kind of situation that happened while he was there visiting their Bethel there in Germany. He mentions that the director of the German branch had grown a large beard in the fashion of Charles Taze Russell. But Judge Rutherford did not want anything at all to remain that reminded him of C.T. Russell, not even a beard. Hence we see today that witnesses are not allowed to wear beards and this stemmed from the days of Charles Taze Russell. So sitting at the dinner, his dinner table, he was within earshot of the judge, and the director was sitting at the same table with the judge, and he asked him for a new rotary press. Now the judge said nothing for a while while he just ate. Then suddenly the judge looked up, his eyes pinned severely on the director's huge C.T. Russell beard and said, I will buy you the press if you take that thing off pointing to the director's beard. It surely shocked his sensibilities, but he merely heeded the warning and soon shamefacedly appeared minus the beard. So that was the president of God's people doing things like that. The next section is entitled The Magdeburg Convention. Again, this is in 1925, and he mentioned that there were about 15,000 who showed up for this convention. Now, just imagine if you're planning for a convention for 12,000 and 3,000 extra people show up. Well, they had to improvise. They rented tents, circus tents. They set them up outside, and they installed temporary plumbing, so on and so forth. But something else happened they organized a cafeteria where they would serve hot food for a small price. This was the first cafeteria ever organized by Watchtower and it was so successful and such a money maker that the society would go on to use this as a regular feature of assemblies and conventions for the next, oh, I would say 70 years until the 90s when this was done away with. The author was in charge of pre-convention transportation arrangements. He was now told by the beardless German director to try to make as much possible to defray expenses so that we could show the judge a good financial report. This kind of sounds similar. If you are are a Jehovah's Witness or were one, You may remember at every convention and every assembly you ever attended, there was always an announcement 
that there was a deficit. Every convention, every assembly, there was always a deficit. Come to find out, most times, more often than not, there wasn't a deficit, but that was announced to make people and guilt people into donating. So he mentioned some more of the judge's visit there in 1925 at this convention. And that's while he was there not to preach the resurrection of these princes, but really the work that lay ahead. He was letting them down. He was bursting their bubble even before the year 1925 had ended. Joseph Franklin Rutherford envisioned mountainous stacks of watchtowers, golden age, awakes, consolation, books, brochures that needed to be printed for the millions who would flock to their true religion, their theocratic society. And so the climax of the judge visited of the judge visit ended this way and a mass token of his benevolence to the Bethel brothers and sisters he fed each one of the multitude of the 15,000 there at the convention with one hot dog and some potato salad just as Jesus fed people with a few fish and some bread some loaves of bread the judge fed people a hot dog and some potato salad. And so most people who attended that convention, they don't remember the talks. They don't remember anything else except for receiving a hot dog. Way to go, judge. The next section is entitled The Judge's Blueprint. It mentions that it wasn't until July of 1938 when discussing the advent of theocracy in 1938 that he was catapulted back to his memorable dinner meeting at the eve of the Magdeburg, Magdeburg Convention in 1925 of the judge talking about his wild dreams of the Watchtower Society and the mountains of books that needed to be printed because there was mountains of people who would stream to the true religion. And remember, 1938 was the year that basically sealed the deal for the theocratic nation. No longer were congregations able to vote for their own elders. Now that was decided upon by the headquarters. So all these years from 1919 to 1938, the Watchtower Society had used the experiences of the formation of the nation of Israel and how they grew into a nation and eventually built their own sort of watchtower, their temple in Jerusalem. The watchtower patterned its same growth this in the same manner. So this collective leadership now that was in Brooklyn Bethel was this third layer to the theocratic arrangement. He ends this chapter with this subheading entitled, I Did Have Moments of Misgivings. And I will say that he had moments of doubts, just like many of us had growing up in this cult. Some things just don't add up. Some things aren't right. You probably had a feeling, a gut feeling that this may be not be the truth or whatever and so did he he mentions that he was becoming organizational minded to a, an alarming degree and so he, he talks about how instead of dwelling on these misgivings he just kind of uh, put his head down and, and plowed forward in a sense in his um, in 1925 when the world was supposed to be ending and the princes were supposed to be resurrected 
while the call throughout Germany was for carpenters, bricklayers, plumbers, electricians, so on and so forth, to build a shiny brand new Bethel factory. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Armageddon is so close, yet there is a new watchtower headquarters being built in Warwick. And so the pattern is just repeating itself. Same thing that happened in the 20s is happening now. And so this will conclude this chapter. Please stay tuned for the next. Thank you for taking time to watch and listen to this presentation. Post your comments, like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the next chapter.